Perfect, perfect. All right, well, I can go ahead and kick us off. Um, I know that the team has a, a lot of great content they want to share, so don't want to take up um, too much of their time. But um, thanks again, everybody, for joining. Um, this is our Noam East uh, Og, and they are going to be presenting on, you know, the the campaign tracking uh, multiverses of madness. So excited to hear this. Um, I'll post the links to join uh, join in on this Og, so you'll get updates regarding their chapter and uh, future events uh, that are going to be posted. But really looking forward to this, and I'll uh, I'll kick it over to Jeff. All right. So thank you, everybody. Um, so hello and welcome, welcome to, to today's very special user group meeting. Uh, before we jump into our presentation today, we do have a bit of housekeeping. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and after today's session, we will post a link to the recording on our user group page. Also, there are a few things that I'd like to call out. First, uh, today's session is packed with a lot of content, so we would like to ask that you please hold your questions until the end of the presentation and then place them out in the chat window for us to handle at that time. Second, if you haven't already, please make sure to join our user group. Third and last, if you'd like to catch up on previous sessions, please check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we are providing the links to both in the chat as we speak. Great, All right. should be good. Well, good morning and good afternoon to those in EMEA. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Jeff Bloomer, and I'm the manager of digital analytics for Kroger Personal Finance. If you haven't already heard of Kroger, uh, we are the largest grocery retailer in the United States. Uh, at Kroger Personal Finance, uh, we drive value by partnering with third-party vendors to bring our products to our customers. Those products are credit cards, made possible by a long-standing partnership with the U.S. Bank, uh, gift cards, and money services. Having been with Kroger since 2013, I spent at least five of those years providing implementation guidance, debugging work, and some reporting until I was promoted to my current role in 2019. As the manager of, di of, the, uh, of the digital analytics team, it is my job to manage the relationship with our digital partners who assist us with implementing and set up essential reporting. I also work with the marketing organization to ensure proper campaign tracking methods and to make sure standards and documentation procedures are properly maintained. Of course, there are still lots of reports to build, but everyone knows what that's like. Um, I work and train others to keep our standards clean, so our reporting is clean. And that's where I'll leave you to introduce my fellow user group leaders, Jen Dungan and Andy Lunsford. Take it away, Jen. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Jen Dungan, and I'm the Optimization Manager Analytics at Torstar in Toronto, Ontario. We're one of Canada's largest media companies, uh, focused mostly on print and digital media, um, but we have many other digital ventures. I'm responsible for web analytics for all of our digital properties, but mostly I focus on the main business line, which is our newspaper sites. You may have heard of the Toronto Star, but we have six other daily publications and 25 community newspapers. In addition to these, we have business directory, vehicle listings, rentals and real estate, flyers and coupon portals, regional magazines, trade shows, and so much more. Uh, I handle everything in the analytics lifecycle from designing our infrastructure, documenting it all, working with our devs and QA, writing and managing the code in Adobe Launch, doing UAT testing, building reports, and working with our data team to process um, the raw data into our lake. Uh, so in addition to pulling reports, I teach others how to pull their own reports because I just don't have time to pull that for everybody. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I'm always watching to ensure that everything we have remains functional and relevant and jump in to tweak and redesign as needed. So that's enough about me. I would love to introduce our newest member to the NOM East user group, our new code leader, Andy. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, Jeff. Hello, all. I'm Andy Lunsford, and I'm the manager of digital analytics implementation at First Financial Bank, and your newest co-leader for the Gnome East user group. The way I like to describe my role is that while my colleagues, who are hopefully on this call right now listening, are focused on diving into the valuable insights of our analytics implementation to our stakeholders and product teams, my primary responsibility is ensuring that the data they are delving these insights from is correctly implemented and being captured inside Adobe Analytics. My other responsibilities include maintaining and implementing all Adobe Analytics data collection at the bank across all our web properties. Uh, some of the work I've done in my career includes being a lead on a large DTM to launch migration and being the project owner for a report suite consolidation project. 
I've also defined and maintained detailed documentation on data layer structure at my current organization and a few I've worked in the past. And fun fact, I briefly worked with Jeff uh, at Kroger. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how we're connected. Uh, so back you, to you, Andy. Jeff. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, so I would like to also shout out uh, to our counterparts in EMEA, Frederick Werner and Daniel Tomlinson, uh, Tomlin, uh, sorry, Daniel Tomlinson for kicking off this series, as well as Sarah Owen and Gretchen Muir, who will complete the circle in the end of September. But for now, I would ask you to join us as we enter the very unstable multi multiverse of madness that is campaign tracking. So that brings us to the topic of our discussion. What is campaign tracking? Well, campaign tracking in its most basic form identifies how customers discover our site. Think about how we already track what our customers do within our websites and mobile apps. So it really shouldn't take any great, great leap for us to also have the desire to understand how they arrived arrive there as well. So if I borrowed an example using our favorite superheroes, um, how was Superman transported to Earth? Well, depending on your age and what movies you've seen or the comics that you've read, I probably just started a healthy debate. Yes, uh, we would use the general term of rocket to describe the form of projectile used to escape Krypton, but exactly what form that rocket would have taken? Uh, well, was it um, an old fashioned rocket like something out of the Flash Gordon movie? Or uh, did it look more like, uh, you know, modern or even somewhat, you know, organic rocket that we've seen in the movies and TV shows? Or <laughs> perhaps it just looked like a giant snow cone with crystal spikes sticking out of it, slowly melting as it entered Earth's atmosphere. And you might be saying right now, like, who cares? They send them to Earth in a rocket and, you know, move on. But remember, these kinds of details become very important because when we start talking later about basic elements of what we should capture in our campaign tracking, details like channel, source, or medium, or just the various, uh, you know, variation of content alone. Well, that's what we're here to discuss, right? Right, and uh, of course, you are the hero in your own universe. And like any hero, you need your supporting characters, otherwise known as your support system, to maintain stability in your universe. Sticking with DC for now, uh, here are some allies to assist you, and we're not just talking about sidekicks. So starting it off would be Commissioner Gordon. This is your team, working to get Thurv towards a common goal, ensuring that the laws of your rules are maintained whenever someone creates a campaign. Essentially, it's your ongoing oversight. We also have Jimmy Olsen, who is your photographic record. Your documentation is crucial, and it needs to be as good as a photograph to properly ensure your campaigns are handled consistently. And like any true photographer, they capture everything. So even your mistakes should be documented so that you can be aware of them and account for them. Then you have Lois Lane. Um, everybody knows that she is like the biggest investigative reporter. So she has helping you to ensure that your re research and you uh, do your research into what your team needs, uh, and that you are covering all of the angles and fulfilling your assignment. All right, and then you've got Lucius Fox. This is basically your processing tech, the code you're using to capture the data, the processing rules you're using, and the marketing channel classifications. You need to ensure that all these elements work together properly. And you have Alpha Pennyworth, who symbolizes the diligence in reviewing what is happening with your campaigns and holding you accountable that things are kept clean and organized. Don't forget that feather duster. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, you have Harvey Dent. This is your law, what your campaign rules are. So formatting, data structuring, methodology. So whether you use Adobe's CID or Google's UTMs, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you have a clear decision and the law has been written. Your team may be very similar or even a little bit different, but regardless of what earth you happen to be on, you should have a team that works together to champion your campaign implementation strategy. 
sometimes, though, uh, what starts out good can easily shift. Um, your once shining rules can become the villain of your tracking. And beware, there are villains lurking in the shadows to wreak havoc on your fragile universe. <laughs> Hash values before your query string parameters. This, this can cause havoc on both your site functionality and your tracking. So if you think about it, look at the hashtags and think about Joker. He loves to watch the world burn, and I can guarantee you these hashtags will make your world burn. Now, how to combat this villain. Let's make sure that your hashes come after the query strings, because anything after that, you're not going to need. You need to make sure that you have all of your information before the hash strings. I'm uh, sorry, before the hashtags. One of me and your URL is quite fine, but any more will give you a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> the Riddler loves throwing his question marks into your URI, resulting in anything past the second question mark disappearing entirely from your capture. So how do we combat this villain? Uh, we want to make sure that we only have a single question mark to denote our query string in the URL, and that all additional queries we want to include utilize an ampersand sign. information overload uh yeah so basically multiple instances of your query strings or strings that are way too long or creating variations in the campaign instead of using source or medium or etc designations and how do you combat that well ensure you only have one uh parameter you know for, for each use if you're using utms make sure you're using each tag for its intended purpose separating out the data for correlation and if you're using a cid that you're following your organization's proper structure in both cases you want to make sure your campaign is consistent and whatever format you've chosen uh, and then you want to also make sure that for your processing rules you know everything is where it's expected to be so that nothing will break and remember don't stuff in extra information that has no value Rachel Ghoul. So, resurrecting your old campaigns. This can cause issues if links for old campaigns still exist out on the web. Now, uh, you will have separate campaigns coming into the site without having the proper ability to segment, uh, segment them out. So, if, as you can see <laughs> from our example, the way to combat this is don't reuse your old campaigns. If you want a campaign that's named similarly, get into the habit of adding a unique identifier, dates or whatever, maybe the quarter or a numerical date value, or maybe it has a unique generated ID from the marketing system. But whatever you do, if you're going to iterate, make sure that you're not just using something from the past. And when something looks out of the ordinary, double check it. A distorted variation of your data caused by a typo or inconsistent format can be lurking to wreak havoc on your campaigns, leaving you such wonderful sources like Facebook instead of Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and if we want to combat this villain, we want to make sure that our consistent name we have consistent naming and format to our standards to make sure that we remove as much potential for human error as possible. Now. Uh, like anything, standards and needs can change. And what may have started out as a great standard may have shifted over time, and now it's become the villain of your implementation. Uh, maybe you're switching from UTMs to CIDs or vice versa. Maybe you need to update your existing format to capture additional data. And how you do you combat this? Well, first off, don't panic. You can use processing rules and classifications to continue to accommodate both standards. You just need to make sure that the same kind of information is being captured and to map both variants into your suite. Uh, make sure if you're adding new data, make sure that it's added in such a way that when those values aren't provided, nothing breaks. Make it backwards compatible. And then we have 
good old Bizarro here. So this basically covers everything else that can go wrong. Basically anything you know that you just can't anticipate until it actually happens. As much as we try to prepare, there will still always be something that just makes you scratch your head. So the basic way to approach this is classification rules are about the only recourse here. And these rules can process data up to six months in the past. So when the unexpected occurs, you can do some work to create ad hoc rules to adjust to the issues as they rise. Just remember, classification rules are take a lot of work to do. So make sure that you are consolidating as much as you can. Oh, and just remember, I should say, that's just the tip of the kryptonite. So lack of consistency and standards will also be your greatest weakness. So let's take a look at DC as an example. Uh, they keep rebooting franchises, changing the tones from you know movie to movie and show to show. They have parallel characters in movies and television that are played by different actors and exist in their own isolated bubble universes. There's no consistency or organization, and, and jokes aside with Lego Batman here, it's not just over decades. Even in recent years, they have rebooted and changed the tone and direction of their superhero movies constantly. Dark and gritty, fun and silly, and so on. Uh, you know, some movies have even been cursed to go on through multiple directors over the course of the shoot. So the, this results in inconsistencies that are actually very hard to overcome. And I'm sure a lot of us here feel the exact pain when it comes to our campaign, campaign tracking. And that brings us to a shining example of planning. Whether or not you like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you have to hand it to them. At the beginning, they sat down and planned out their phases, creating the building blocks for the largest interconnected movie franchises of all time. Over the last 14 years, and still planning and growing, the MCU has done a remarkable job of integrating their movies and TV shows into a consolidated and cohesive structure, using the same actors between movies and TV. Within reason, there have been a few recasts, <laughs> but each phase was planned in advance, and to make sure it fit into the overall story arc that they wanted to tell, no matter who was writing or directing each piece, each release was curated and reviewed to make sure it fit that model. And regardless of you or your organization's preference, you likely have both CIDs and UTMs being captured at some point. Even Marvel couldn't account for everything with their planning. Just look at the latest Spider-Man movie, um, which is amazing. You should go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> what Marvel did very well here is tying their past movies that don't follow this well-constructed plan, making a space for them, while often DC chose to ignore the past. We should use Marvel's strategy here for switching between UTM parameters to CIDs. We can sap into our inner Tony Stark and build a solution that allows us to seamlessly switch into a world where they can coexist. And thankfully, we have more than a cave and a box of scraps to build our solution. <laughs> We've got AEP data collection tags, also known as launch to a lot of you out there. Using the Data Element Assistant, which is available as an extension in the catalog for tags, we can set up a sequence data element that checks to see if CID or concatenated UTM exists. Our CID is straightforward as far as the, as the data element configuration. We just use the query parameter to look at data element value, but our concatenated UTM is a con concatenation of all the UTM parameters that will ideally be set up in the same order as our CID classification, which will allow us to use our query parameter lookup data elements for each part of the UTM to then set this value dynamically as our campaign value inside Adobe. So you can see we have all the different bits of the UTM that all make up the concatenated UTM data element here. Now, your plans don't have to be as detailed as the MCU. Start small. Maybe this means something like using an Excel document to track your campaigns and to create oversight on what is being used and what has been used. As you start to discover what works, you start, can start to refine and improve the process, making it a lot more polished.
and then eventually you may want to buy into a campaign management tool, something that is specifically designed for this purpose and has worked with many organizations to streamline the usability and maintain consistency and adherence to your defined rules. We have with us today a representative of one such tool. Now, this is a reminder, this is not a sales pitch, but our agents from Clarivine have joined us today to demonstrate some of the capabilities of their tool and to provide some clarity for the chaos and madness involved with campaign management, given their experiences in the field. Well, thanks, Jeff. I'm taking that as my cue that I can take over. And that is the best introduction that we at Clarivine have ever gotten. So thank you all for your hard work. That was amazing. Um, so I'm going to look for Jeff to nod his head that he can see my screen OK. Good. And we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate um, having this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about who we are and what we do. We are Clarivine, and we're going to get into a little bit more about what we mean when we say data integrity starts with standards. Before I get into that, just want to let you know that it's worthwhile to stay to the end of this presentation because we are going to be giving away a Kindle Paperwhite. There will be two winners, so stick around until the end, and Jeff will go ahead and manage that giveaway at the end here. So who are we at Clarivine and why are we here? As Jeff and the team alluded to, we are your technology that levels up your game when it comes to your campaign tracking. So Spider-Man is great on his own. He's got his own powers. Batman, super strong, great fighter, really smart, really rich on his own, but aren't they even better when they have a great piece of technology supporting them, like this Iron Spider costume here, not costume, sorry, technology. Um, so what we do at Clarivine is that we empower enterprise organizations to take a proactive approach to their marketing measurement to activate their data standards across both their people silos and their technology silos so you can speed up your data-driven decisions. And to keep going with the metaphor that the team has established throughout the first half of this presentation, we help you combat those many villains that you face on a day-to-day -day basis. I would say especially all of them, but especially Brainiac and Clayface with uh, with our platform, there's no Facebook possible. It's always going to be Facebook or FB or whatever you decide that channel is going to be named. We make it so that no one on your team can color outside the lines of the standards that you have set in place. We make sure that your, your organization is following your data language laws. And this is because it's a huge challenge in the marketplace for our customers. Even with all the modern systems and data, teams today continue to rely on really antiquated and manual processes like Excel or hoping that downstream ETL will address all their challenges. And these types of platforms or solutions like Excel or Google Sheets or even an internally built tool aren't necessarily purpose built to solve this problem. An internally built tool might be, but you don't have a, a whole team of engineers constantly supporting and iterating off of that tool. And what means is that you live in that world of shared documents and spreadsheets with really complex setups. We've seen examples from our customers of, of you know, sometimes 50 or more tabs within an Excel spreadsheet that's getting passed around from person to person uh, with little to no control. And that results in millions of dollars of wasted media spend. From a Media Post article several years ago, it was estimated that 21 cents out of every media dollar is lost due to bad data. And what you want when you invest in a really modern, beautiful technology stack is a house that looks like this. Right? And so even though you've made significant investments in your technology and your operations with this goal of your data house, what happens is that while it may look really slick and awesome from the outside, it's probably a big old hot mess on the inside. And then you have someone coming to you, the analytics person on the team saying, hey, can you find that one book for me? and then you're left to wade through and sort through this mess and they don't understand why it's taking you days to find that one little specific thing that they asked for. 
So how does this issue manifest itself? Unless you have a data standard in place, something as simple as a naming convention, uh, what you capture could be fragmented and opaque and ultimately difficult to capture at the end. So this is a campaign name example, but you can imagine that this could be your, uh, your string after your link in your tracking code. So the example here is that you've got this team that's activating this campaign across all these different channels. And because they don't have, number one, a common data language in place, they're all naming the campaign different things. And then number two, because they don't have a system in place to ensure that they're all following those same rules, it results in this really incomplete picture of what's happening in the campaign. So you've spent all this money, you know, you've invested all this time and energy into this campaign, and at the end of the day when you want to know, well, what was more effective, email or social? How did mobile and our content work together? The answer is going to be a big old Riddler question mark. Now, one thing I want to be clear is that our platform does not determine your data language. Your data language is up to your organization. And it's important, as Jeff and Jennifer and Andy have gone through, it's important for your organization to do the, tar the hard work of determining what that data language looks like. At the end of the day, though, we are that system by which your data language is enforced and activated across your ecosystem figure out how to advance my slide here. There we go. We believe the way that companies approach data has to change. You need to take a proactive approach up front. So determining that data language and enforcing it up front rather than relying on your downstream teams to clean it up. I'm sure that for the folks on that call today, that's music to your ears to not be that cleanup crew at the end of the day, cleaning up everyone else's mess. Um, you also need a form of collaboration. So rather than passing around a static Excel doc between teams, a cloud-based solution where everyone can come together and collaborate in one singular place. And then finally, automation of data flows across your technology so that your classifications are, and your rules are flowing seamlessly downstream into Adobe Analytics or any other platform, your data lake, BI layer, what have you. And again, the way that you accomplish this in the most technologically savvy way possible is to upgrade your system um, to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And that's where we come in. We believe that data integrity starts with standards. So it's the standards that your organization puts in place in the upfront. Again, that's up to you or just the manner by which you enforce them. And so you go from this incomplete, inconsistent data mess upfront which often manifests itself in Adobe Analytics like this. Um, so it's, I know it's a little fuzzy here, but this is something we see all the time when we start talking to prospective customers is that they've got, they go into their analytics platform and they've got this massive unspecified bucket of data. So while you may have almost 600,000 visitors to your site, when a business owner then comes to you and says, hey, how did those people get to our site? Again, the whole purpose of our conversation here, how did Superman get to Earth? You're left saying, well, we don't know how almost 461,000 of them got to our site. We have no idea. What our platform does is that it changes this type of picture to this type of picture within your Adobe Analytics environment, where you have all these different rules and classifications that you can then slice and dice your data by, getting more and more granular. One thing I want to put a finer point on here is that there are the five core UTM parameters. Using a platform like Clarivine is going to allow you to add more dimension to your data as well. So you can have as many classifications, as many parameters as you want within your tracking code URL. So so if you want to know more information about how folks are getting to your site, we allow for that um, enrichment or dimensionalization of your data. And so we go from those sad red X's within your data landscape to this structured and defined data across your channels. So you know how all your different channels are working together and what is really leading to success on your side, where you should pull investment from and where you should add investment to. So within our platform, we allow you to define your standards, take your data language that you've determined, and define them within specific 
uh, manners within uh, the platform. My colleague Ethan is going to go through that. And then apply those standards across your teams and your channels. And then finally connect them downstream into your other platforms. And this is a win-win for everyone across your teams. You know, we're talking to you folks here that are at the end of this process, the analytics and BI team, but you're really there to feed this virtuous cycle with the rest of your team members within your organization. So with better data, uh, cleaner data, you're gonna deliver richer insights back to the content and creative team to show them what the what assets that they created are working, what they should make more of. You know, if something worked really well in an email, an image worked really well in an email, maybe you should try activating that on the site. It also helps out with marketing and ad ops and makes their life easier when it comes to actually implementing these data standards or getting them out of those static Excel spreadsheets that they're passing around and into an intuitive UI that they're familiar with. And then for the digital marketing teams, giving them a de-siloed view into their data to understand how to acquire and retain more customers, the ultimate end goal of what we do every single day. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ethan, who is gonna go ahead and do the fun part of getting inside our platform to show that to you. Thank you, Kendall. Let me pull up my screen here. And I'll look for the same nodding to make sure that everyone's seeing what's the template. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Kendall, and thanks to the rest of the team. Uh, so far, you've set the, the bar pretty high in terms of uh, the, the presentation and the theme. I'm going to try and keep that going here. Uh, but where I do want to start with, well, I'll first I'll introduce myself. I'm Ethan Lowe. I'm a senior sales engineer at, at Clarivine. And where I want to first orient everybody within our platform is, is a template. We use that word pretty uh, Pretty regularly, um, it's the core of our platform, and, and really, a, a template is a, a collection of all your taxonomy elements. It's going to contain those formatted fields and patterns and lists. Uh, it really it gets then applied to all the data standards of the specific type of data we're we're uh, looking to um, control and manage. And in this case, of course, tracking codes. But this can apply to campaign names, digital assets, like Kendall mentioned as well. A lot of various different use cases. Um, and, you know, really what we find is a lot of organizations think they have a master set of templates or Excel sheets or rules or a PDF that gets circulated around and that everyone's following it. But I think we all know on this call that that's really not happening. Um, it may intend to happen. It may start out that way. Someone goes on vacation. Somebody leaves the org. Macros break. Whatever that might be, the, whatever might be the case, right? Things can kind of go sideways rather quick. Um, within our templates, we help you keep that all under control. Really, um, we can help with bringing that data inbound from various destinations into our template here, uh, where you can then massage the data, govern the data, control the data, manage it. Um, and then as well as enter and fulfill and enrich that data within the template, and then ultimately push that data. Uh, data set, rows of data, whatever you, however you want to think about it, to your outbound destinations, right? Whether that's an analytics platform or a cloud storage platform. So a lot of versatility, use, versatile use cases there, right? Um, uh, a dam perhaps for, for data enrichment on your creative assets, whatever the case may be, our templates are very versatile and flexible in that way. And that's where I just want to start one slide. And then now we're going to get into the platform here. Give me one moment to tab over there. All right. So this really is where I want to start uh, and just highlight the fact, let me just hit a little refresh in case the view, there's a little weird. All right, looks like it's coming through all right there. Um, sorry, there's a little, little glitch in the, in the team's view, at least for me at least. Um, so this is the folder view. So depending on the team that you sit on, depending on the templates that you have interaction with, we can really configure that view based off your user permissions, right? We're a, we're a SaaS platform, it comes with all the features you'd expect single sign-on, integrations, intuitive UI. But really, if you're on the creative team, you're only gonna see the creative templates. If you're on the tracking team, you're only gonna see the tracking templates. If you want your agency to have access and have templates specific to the agency, they're just gonna have their view. I have super admin view, right? All, all super user admin view. I can see all the templates here, but really this is often gonna get pared down just to specific view for what your, your access should be um, within the platform. Uh, as we then kind of move through the, the process here, and we'll get into a template in a minute, what I want to just highlight is everyone works differently. Every org has a different process, has a different flow in how they go from campaign build out to uh, generating their, their click through URLs or tagging. This is just one kind of waterfall view that we often see a lot of organizations use is that 
you know, they go from campaign setup, creating the overall, you know, hierarchy. It's a big, the high level campaign. Then they're going to go through maybe towards a placement build out and then add in creative setup. And then once that's all completed, they want to be able to, you know, associate that with a specific URL. This may not be the case for everybody. Sometimes you just go from one template to rule them all, or you might have separate templates for separate teams, but wanted to keep this in mind in terms of maybe Wayne Enterprises here, this is their, their essential workflow when they go from left to right. Now in that campaign setup view, what we're gonna first step into is that template, a campaign naming template, which is, seems pretty straightforward. It doesn't always go that straightforward. Everyone seems to like to name things differently. It can be the wild, wild west sometimes here. If we wanna name this one Wayne Enterprises with you know, my fun typos on a live demo, that's always great. There we go. And we're going to call this, yeah, winter 22. This is where we're going to, again, go through and pick out all those different data elements that go into just a simple naming convention, right? We're going to build one out for display. We're going to do it in the U.S., in English. Um, you're going to pick your agency. You're going to pick your target. Give it a name description here. And this came up earlier on the call, right? Everyone's going to want to name something differently. They might have different structures. You know, if I want to make this um, winter... 22, right? I can do that. It's going to give me some um, guard, guardrails around that, what I can or can't name it. Um, but as you notice there, it changed, it took away the space to put that dash in, right? So this is, we'll get back to that later if we have time um, on the setup of everything, but really this helps you keep that consistent, right? If you only want it to be 12 bytes, you can make it 12 bytes. If you only want it, to, it has to be six bytes or more. If you don't want underscores, then you get the picture there. So we could put some, some uh, control around that as well. Uh, identify some simple fields here like budget owner, funnel stage, launch year, whatever it might be. All right. And then essentially there, you cannot move forward. You cannot submit this until you have all the data fields filled out. You can do multiple at once. We're just building out one here. If I wanted to drag and drop uh, and do this over and over again and, and with some you know nuances there to build out multiple campaigns, I can. Uh, in this instance, I'm just going to remove that row. What we see here on the left, our campaign name, our final campaign name, which is really a concatenation of all the fields I just pulled in. And again, it's built off a pattern that you'll help, you'll configure, that our clients can configure in whatever standards, whatever control, whatever management they want to put upon that. Um, it's pr pretty simple in that respect. Uh, all the data fields that I went through here are different types of lists or, or metadata fields that are going to have maybe dependencies upon one another, parent-child relationships, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, you know, the United States might have you know, English, Spanish languages associated with it, but had I chosen um, you know, France, it might just be a French option. I think you know, it's pretty all intuitive, but those are the places that things can tend to go sideways. People make assumptions, they pick the wrong short code, whatever that might be, and we can really help kind of wrangle that together so that it comes out proper on, on the, uh, at the end, All right? So then moving along here, um, really where we will want to get to next, and I'm going to jump back. I'm not going to save that. Um, we're going to go into our, our tracking code template here and, and build one out from, from the beginning again, as you saw in that, that same demo for the campaign name here. So we're going to call this Wayne type. We'll do again. There we go. Thank you. Uh, we're going to, pick that campaign name. So when I built out that campaign earlier, had I hit submit, it's then gonna power this list here. I'd mentioned dependent list, I'd mentioned drill down list earlier, the different types of parent child lists available. We also have powered lists. So now we're gonna build out our link, our CID link associated to a specific campaign, one that we previously built out so that we can you know, bridge that connection and make sure everything stays in alignment. Again, we're gonna go through here, we're gonna pick this one out for display. And, you know, if I want to go ahead and do multiple at once, that's pretty easy. We'll just grab three there. Uh, in the U.S., I mean, we want one for English, one for Spanish, do another one for English. And then you can pick different sub-channels. There we go. And again, all of these are going to be dependent on the, you know, the previous list, the previous metadata choice that we've selected along the way. And we'll drag and drop that one. So a lot of the features, a lot of the functions, the same that you're used to in, in different spreadsheet uh, solutions there. We can grab that, third party, that one. Go. And really, that pulls it all together, much in the same way that you saw the campaign name, we're getting the pattern put together, we're getting the, the various versions of our CID, of, our, of our, our tracking parameters there. 
If you want obfuscation, we can include that as well so that the user experience doesn't see all the different uh, data points within that URL. Um, and really this helps you create multiple links at scale um, for various different use cases for one camp, you know, maybe associated with one campaign or many different campaigns. It really helps kind of bring that all together, um, eliminate some of the data error. And I think we were talking about this before, right? Often I think people get caught up on treating the symptom and not the cause, right? This really helps address that, um, address the cause, fix the cause of the problem, not just the symptom of it, right? Be more proactive rather than reactive here. So all comes together, we can check, we put the link in together. And then if I wanna just go to a final build out, one that's been completed already, um, after it goes through a submission process, which of course can include uh, approval processes along the way. Um, you can have someone check it if you want. Ultimately, a lot of our clients don't need that approval process as it goes through submission um, because we put in those guardrails, we put in those controls in place so that it it's, uh, comes out proper and, and correct every single time. Really, this then goes through and you can output, output this data, your links to whatever final destination, whether that's Adobe Analytics, Google Analytics, um, you know, other data storage platforms, whatever that might be. All right. And then moving all along, just a, a brief view into really how this all comes together. Uh, this is the, the template setup page. This is where you'll define what fields go into those columns. Um, and then really this is that connection point. This is where we can connect to those downstream platforms. Uh, Adobe, for example, right? You'll, you'll link your accounts there. You'll name this connection what you want to name it. And then you can use a default output format. Um, you can customize that to a different format if you like. We can have multiple outbound destinations from the same template. So when that data comes out, it can go to multiple places in different formats with different fields, uh, different use cases, you know, different needs for different platforms. So that's where that all comes together. As we go through here and just a quick view into maybe like the pick list, how some of that comes together. Uh, oftentimes we want to take some of the guesswork out of things for, for our users, right? And this is where I was getting at the, the country codes or the language codes or whatever that might be. These data elements can live behind the scenes. They can get included in the pattern. They can get included in the links. They don't always have to be selected, but if you want to you know, narrow down the, the countries in APAC versus EMEA versus North America, and put those country codes in place so that people that may not be as aware or, or um, might assume they know what the codes are, you can take all that assumption out of, out of play and make sure that it's selected properly every single time. And then ultimately here, as we get into the one more final thing that I wanted to show is our field sets. Um, you know, if we go into uh, the campaign, go. This is where I wanted to highlight really how you can pare down, you can put guardrails around, even those freeform text fields, right? We can create those lists, you can create those pick lists, so it's very user-friendly and pick and choose, you only have a few to choose from, but you do have the occasion, and, and you saw a few there with my poor typing, right? You wanna have some freeform typing fields, you need to be able to have some open text, and this is where you can set that up, but with guardrails, right? You're gonna convert, you know, uppercase, you want everything to go to uppercase, you're gonna replace spaces with a dash, it needs to be at least six, bytes, no more than 12 bytes, that sort of thing. So even, even in a freeform type place, you can then put um, some constrictions around it, some regulation around it so that it comes out proper every single time. All right, and with that, I'm going to stop share. I'm gonna throw it back to Jeff, but that was a quick view of our demo, or a, a quick demo of our platform. I hope that all made sense, and uh, thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much to our folks at Clarivine, our agents, I should say. So every team, no matter their composition, is made up of the frontline champion or champions and their support team. All are equally important to ensuring a smooth ecosystem. It will be a bumpy ride as you first get started. So figure out your universe. There are many to choose from. Then start to determine what you need to be successful. You may not be able to identify it all at the beginning, but like any franchise or series, you can grow and change as new needs are determined. Just remember, stay consistent within your chosen path. And if you need to cross dimensions, plan it out. And be creative and deliberate in how you blend them. So now that we've had the opportunity to 
uh, have everything represented. Again, I want to thank uh, Clara Vine for being here. I want to turn it over to our group here uh, so that they can um, ask questions. Uh, we've got about uh, 12 minutes left to the hour. Uh, we do want to leave a little bit of time here just at the end, just, to rem just as a reminder. So opening the floor for questions. I can actually start with a question out to the group, uh, out to the P attendees. How many of you uh, are dealing with issues like this today? Go ahead. Oh, Jeffrey, un unmute yourself there. Yeah, what you were demonstrating is something at a scale I was used to in a previous job. I'm now in a new job that is 10 times as large. So by sheer scale, it's massive. And I'm not sure how to handle that, inheriting that, um, understanding what they've done, why they've done it. Um, they've moved fast and grown really quickly. So now I'm in charge, but I don't know what I'm in charge of. So looking at this, if you were to inherit something, what are some quick ways of getting up to speed and knowing what they've done and how they, why they've done it that way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's always a challenge, no matter whether you're taking over campaign tracking or an implementation. Uh, hopefully, you know, someone on your marketing team has some insights that you can start like poking them for, for insights to go, okay, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? But a lot of it is just going to be groundwork, just digging in and try to figure out what you've got, where it's coming from. And it's not, not going to be a fun time. No, no, <laughs> it is. Hey, I, I will say the same. Yes. It's, it's going to be a lot of, uh, very ba basic essential frontline work, but I, I will say that tools like this definitely uh, make the difference in being, being able to do that. And a number of classification rules too. <laughs> I wish I had better advice, honestly, but that, that, that's, that's always a tough one, especially when it's at that scale. Yeah, uh, to add to both Jenna and uh, Jeff's comments there, the way I would start is just trying to like get as big of a picture as you can. Try to see what you've captured currently, kind of see like what all has been set because no matter what, you're going to have to work with what's already been set. Some of those rules have already been decided for you. Some of those things have already been are out in the wild. Some of the campaigns might still be out there. Um, so work with the marketing team to understand kind of what campaigns do exist. And if it's kind of a situation where it's not really been any standard of any kind and you kind of have some of those rules just cast your vision as wide as possible to make sure you're capturing every single one that's been sent so far that's important and then just kind of work on whittling it down with standards to kind of like reel that <laughs> wide funnel in yeah and and i would say if 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 it's as large as you're saying don't expect a quick turnaround this this could take a long time to to kind of claw your way up to to a, a position where you understand what's going on so hopefully hopefully you've got people on on your team and above you who understand the challenges now you do, do your best to, to explain to them why what why the complications and what what's happening so that you know you don't have people breathing down your neck it's been two months why don't you have this under your belt well it could take two years for all you know <laughs> depending on, on what's out there and what's coming in. And just just make sure you've got people who have your back. And I will say, uh, uh, you know, I, I can definitely feel the pain with what you're going through. Um, I mean, with as much work as we have done to try and get our arms around uh, campaign tracking codes and things like that, we still have a lot of work to do. So um, it's every organization has these kinds of challenges. The more that you can collaborate with your marketing organization, meet with them, talk with them, help them understand your problems, and also try and get them to help you, uh, the, you know, the, the, the easier this job's going to be. Okay. 
All yep, right. thank you. I see there was a question posed in the chat that um, Kendall has answered. Yeah. So, uh, and, and Kendall, if you just you want to if you want to actually uh, say this orally so that uh, people can can hear, that's yeah, that's perfectly absolutely. fine. Absolutely. Um, so I apologize if I mispronounced your name, but you he asked uh, where does pricing start for Clarifying and acknowledge that of course it depends, um, but it would be helpful to know. So when they're discussing with their clients, I would say of course it does depend. It depends on the scope um, of the, the contract. We do have customers that are in the five figures right now. We also have customers that are in the mid to upper six figures as well. Um, and those are for global organizations that are using Clarivine across their entire uh, uh, global marketing and advertising teams. But I would say a fair place to start is about 10K per marketing and advertising channel. If you're using our platform to manage tracking codes, you can also use it for campaign names, placement IDs, et cetera. Those are just gonna be additional templates that you need in your implementation. And obviously different regions and teams would require additional templates as well. Um, so if you want to use our platform to manage your email tracking codes, but you've got, you know, four different regional teams, that would be around like the 40K mark. Um, we do have customers that use our platform to manage, you know, display, paid social, uh, uh, owned media or email, um, owned social, so on and so forth. And so uh, that's how we build out and scope out our contracts. Oh, and that's annual. Thank you. Good question. So we do have probably time for maybe one more question. Oh, quiet crowd today. Yes, I will say. I think that means you guys did your job great. <laughs> Jeff, is there anything that we need to do for the giveaway at this point, or is that just so, automatically done by who depends, who attends? Yeah. So I'm rounding out the Q&A actually with a riddle for everyone. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Yes. And so uh, that riddle is, you know, what question can someone ask all day long, always get completely different answers, and yet all the answers could be correct? The answer for that is, what time is it? And the only answer to that question right now is, it's time for a giveaway for Clara, from Clarivine. <laughs> So Kendall? Uh, yeah, so just visit this link here, clarivine.com slash, do you guys say AUG, AUG, Kindle giveaway? Um, and then we'll no notify winners um, by Wednesday, September 8th next week. And you can Kindle, also scan that QR code as well. Ah, I was gonna say, and if you want, we can post this into the chat uh, yeah. as well. I think- yeah, it should um, be in the chat. Yeah. Oh, and there was one more question. Yeah, yeah. Eric, I think Kendall. Um, Kendall, I, I can handle that real quick. I just want to make sure we got the giveaway done. But yeah, I did see that question. And it's a great question. It comes up a lot. And just like the pricing, it depends. <laughs> um, it really, it depends on the situation, right? We have, we have FinServe clients, we have healthcare clients, we have pharma clients where obfuscation is not just like a nice to have, it's, it's kind of like a need to have, right? You, you don't want to have all that sensitive data. So it's up to every org and, and maybe <laughs> certain regulations in some situations and in and, and laws. Um, but really, if it, I, I'm, you know, kind of a believer that obfuscation is great is a great tool and something that we can provide within our platform as well. Um, and if you can use it and, and, and leverage it, I think that's all the better, but it's not always necessary. A lot of the links that we provide also can be kind of whittled down. So it's not fully visible, but it's, you know, it's truncated a little bit, it's concatenated a little bit. So it's, you know, kind of halfway obfuscated, it's masked a little bit. So there's a lot of different flavors of it that we can we can help accommodate with. Excellent answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, there are a few resources uh, that you can actually follow up with after this uh, presentation. So um, we're providing them here and we will also make sure to provide them afterwards as well. But uh, some just some good things to follow up with uh, to, to take a look at. And of course, we've again posted Clarivine's link here for, uh, for their page. And then last, uh, you know, guys, uh, we are uh, Jeff, Jen, and Andy. Uh, please come out and, uh, you know, check out our user group, you know, in, again in the future. Uh, also come and uh, please join our user group. 
and we will post the video from this later uh, at you know when we when it's available. So we thank you so much for coming out and watching us today. Yeah, I just posted the link to the YouTube channel where all user group uh, videos get posted. So um, it, we'll also send out a link afterwards in the the, the post event email. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get caught up on the track, uh, there's a there is a video I, uh, right out there right now from Frederick and Daniel, and so that way you can get caught up for our next meeting that will be coming up on September 27th to completely round out the series. So please make sure to join us. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Great, thank you, thank you so much. It was great. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.